have good intellectual capability and we care uh, and that describes the kind of people that work here and the kind of work we do. Uh, my experiences really have helped me understand what will and won't work and uh, a way to stay away from the trip falls and I can really help customers with design for manufacturability. And I, I really enjoy that because a lot of designers design something that'll work, but it doesn't work well, and it doesn't follow the rules of injection molding. So if we can design for the manufacturability of the part, they get a much better part at uh, usually a lower cost because uh, they'll have excess material that causes sink or um, some different uh, features that uh, create difficulties in molding. And the other thing I've learned is that we can mold just about anything. Uh, with lifters and slides, uh, you can make almost any kind of geometry. Uh, design for manufacturability and additive is quite a bit different than uh, uh, injection molding. You can make almost anything in injection molding, but I think you can make anything in 3D printing. <laughs> it's uh, of course, there's, there'll be a challenge, but uh, we challenge ourselves to make some uh, odd shapes uh, if we have some downtime to try to really test the limits of what the printers can do and what can we do without supports. That's the other thing that's always intriguing is if we can eliminate supports in the design, then it's a very clean, economical way to make parts and I really enjoy doing that. But there's some common mistakes that people make that we can eliminate usually fairly quickly. And the biggest one that I see is improper wall sections. So if you have a base wall of a part, you'd call that T, so that's your wall section. And then what you want is any intersecting wall to that to be 60% of the wall section so you don't have sink. Because when you combine the two things together, that little space at the combination point is the thickest section. So if you thin it down, then you wind up have it to that 60%, then you have something that won't sink or shrink. And we have fantastic people, and uh, the people in the organization are really good listeners. So we listen to what our customers have to say, and then we're also very skilled at what we do. So we try to combine our skill set and the things that we're, um, that we're trying to accomplish so that we can make a good part and then keeping in mind what the customer needs to make you know a fantastic product and I think that's not common I think uh, people focus on what they have to do rather than listening and reflecting on what the customers needs are <laughs>